Good morning. Pastor Sean here on uh, Tuesday, September 7th, with your morning prayer. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. All right, up today is Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, with a sincere heart as you would Christ, not by the way of eye service as people pleasers, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, rendering service with a good with a good will as to the Lord and not to man, knowing that whatever good anyone does, this he will receive back from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. Masters, do the same to them, and stop your threatening, knowing that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and that there is no partiality with him. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to, withstand, to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me in, my op in opening my mouth boldly pr to proclaim my the mystery of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. So that you also may know how I am how I am and what I am doing, Tychius, the beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will tell you everything. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are, and that he may encourage your hearts. Peace be to the brothers, and love from, with faith, from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with love incorruptible. In many ways, uh, many various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in his last days he's spoken to us by his son. All right, we have another one that I, I just preached on week after a uh, week, a week ago, not last Sunday, the Sunday before last. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, um, yeah, in, in the sermon I, I addressed the, the armor of God, and um, it, I mentioned how I've always heard this taught, preached, whatever, with these individual pieces and, and making a good point about how, you know, we're supposed to be ready and how, you know, we, we, we adorn ourselves with all these things to prepare ourselves to to withstand and to do, to do battle. And, you know, when, when I read this, I mean, exactly as I preached it, is is this just, it, it's Christ, through and through. The, the armor of God is, is Christ. What we put on is Christ. Um... In our baptism, we, we put on Christ. We are crucified with him in baptism. And, um, you know, the whole concept then is, is, is kind of fascinating because, you know, it is presented in this kind of battle metaphor. But if we are putting on Christ and then we look at him, well, what did, how did he do battle? He laid his life down. He died. Um which is it goes against everything in us because you know in, in this whole like what are we wrestling against not flesh and blood you know not people but 
the evil one, you know, the, the, these cosmic powers of, of, of spiritual evil. And, um, you know, as human beings, we have this, we, what are our two, two modes when, when we, um, when conflict comes to either fight or flight, right? We either fight it, we run away from it. And it's just so amazing that Jesus takes this third route, which is not the route that we take. He lays it, he, he confronts it only to submit to it and die. Um, he doesn't, he doesn't fight. You know, he doesn't try to overcome it with power. Um, that at least meeting the same kind of you know power that that's uh, coming coming against him, um, he doesn't run away. He stands firm, but he submits to it, sacrifices himself, and dies. And it's it's just this kind of you know this is the way of Christ. This is the um, absolutely amazing, radical, counter intuitive way that we as Christians encounter this world and, and engage with the things around us is not as normal human beings do, but, but through Christ and in his mode of, of, of withstanding, of submitting, of sacrifice, um, and yet not being overcome by it. Which makes sense when you go back then and top of the chapter here where it talks about, you know, children obey your parents. Okay, yeah, we get that. But then slaves obey your earthly masters, which we have total problem with because, you know, slaves and masters, that slavery is a bad thing. Now we can get into a huge discussion about how, you know, back then, you know, when, when we're talking about the slave-master relationship, there was, in a lot of ways, it was more like employee-employer, which is true. There is some truth in that. But they also had slaves. <laughs> I mean, there were also slaves. There were there were very several different ways that you can you can hear slaves and masters in this context, and different things come up. But the point is, Paul doesn't differentiate. He just says, "Slaves obey your earthly masters," um, which again is like so strange to us. Um, but the whole thing about putting on Christ is is understanding. Okay, God has placed you here. He's placed you where you are where you happen to be in this phase of moment of your life um, it is by God's doing you're exactly where he wants you to be when he wants you to be doing what what he wants you to be doing well hopefully you're doing what he wants you to be doing or else you're rebelling against it but um, you know he, he's in control of this situation and so in every situation we have the opportunity to put on Christ and so in any given time, you know, to put on Christ is to submit. You know, going back to what we had yesterday is about wives submitting to your, your husbands and, and all that stuff, and Christians submitting to one another. This is, this is our life. And so when we are faced with a situation, a problem, whatever, we don't approach it like normal people, <laughs> if I could say it that way, because we're Christians. And so how we should be approaching this is so radically different so as to make the people around us just look at us and be so confused. How can you do that? How can you just, how can you be forgiving in this situation? How can, how can you just not be so affected by that? Um, and of course, the answer is Christ. We've put on the armor of God. We've put on Christ. We are, we are baptized. And so we know that the person who we are in conflict with, our, our, our struggle is not with them. Our struggle is with sin. Their sin, my sin. Um, that's, that's the problem. You know, not the person, but, but the sin in both of our hearts. And so um, how do we battle sin? Forgiveness. I mean, that's how Jesus did it, right? He went to the cross to forgive it. Um, it's paid for through the blood of Christ, forgiveness. And so it's just, again, it's, it's a radical concept. <laughs> and, um, you know, it feels like letting people walk over us. It feels like just giving in. It feels like letting somebody else win if you forgive them and don't hold them accountable. Um now that opens up another door we're about you know holding people accountable in some cases like in, in legal sort of civil um kind of things there there needs to be accountability so when somebody commits a crime we can forgive them yes when even when they commit a heinous crime we can forgive them and so that debt of sin no longer exists but they still owe a debt to the state to society to whatever so whether that be jail whether that be whatever so there's 
set that aside. Um, but when we're talking about just normal sort of interactions here, um, you know, we just let go. We, we let it be forgiven. Um, we hear the word of God that says, Jesus Christ died for the sins of the world, and we say, okay, if I believe that, then this is forgiven. And I can't hold it because it's gone. It's, it's dead and buried. I can't dig it up. I can't bring it back. Christ has forgiven it. So let's move on. Let's move ahead. Let's move forward constructively. Let's move ahead in love and peace and, and harmony. Um, which sounds like a very idealistic kumbaya kind of thing, but I mean, that's our life in Christ. So <laughs> it's, it's certainly the, the goal and the ideal. Um, very hard. Very, very challenging. Um, so, you know, if, if you want a project today, um, look for the ways that you can live differently because of Christ. So look for the things that you can forgive. Look for the things that have you've, you've held onto that you can forgive and let go. Look for the ways that you can bring peace into somebody's life. You can bring a, a bit of joy and happiness into their life. It's not hard. <laughs> it really isn't. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, that's putting on the armor of God. Is putting on Christ and engaging the world as Christ engages the world. Um, submission, sacrifice, forgiveness, all that good stuff. All right, well, plenty to, to chew on there, so let us pray. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. All right, we'll have a wonderful, wonderful Tuesday. Um, Hope you are able to put on the armor of God today and uh, live, live as live, live as if you are a baptized child of God. Um, I think it, it's you'll see that it's a, a much better way to go. <laughs> um, so yeah, have a great day, and until tomorrow, peace be with you.